Hello and welcome back to all the mods 7 to the sky. Um, as you could see in the intro, I have made some fancy essence producers. But how did I do that? Well, let me show you. In here, we have garden cloches from immersive engineering that require soil, seeds, electricity and water to produce whatever you put in there. So uh, I made basically all the tier 1 seeds and a bunch of essences because we'll need a bunch of essences to make the high tiers. To make one of the Insanium essence, you will uh, need 1024 of the green Inferium essence. So yeah, that's that's a bunch. Um, this might be just enough to make one, but yeah, we're gonna need a whole bunch more of that. I also made uh, the portal anew here at the top, so it has its own separate area. Fantastic. All right, um, what I want to do today is Tinker's Construct. Uh, Tinker's Construct is uh, a mod that will let you make your own tools and armor. It's a whole bunch of quests for it, starting with a piece of paper and ending with the ATM alloys. Um, I'm not going to do all of it right now, but I will go through the basics and in between episodes I will go... Uh, expand on it. So, to start with, we make patterns. I've already done that, but let's just pretend I didn't. Patterns are super easy to make. Uh, just a bunch of sticks ordered like this with planks. Uh, like that. There we go. We make a bunch. We have a bunch. Fantastic. All right, now that we have the patterns, the next step would be to make a tinker station and a part builder. Right, for the tinker station, all you need is four planks and three patterns which we have luckily for the parts builder it is similar but not exactly um two planks two patterns bam got it now let's place these down and if you place them next to each other you will notice that if you use them you can switch between all the different machines which is really handy that you don't have to exit and go back um here with the part build builder all you need to do is put in your patterns and select which part you want to build, put in a material and bam there you go. If we make a stone pickaxe, you will see it has these stats and a pattern cost of two so that means it just needs two cobblestone. There we go. We have a pick hat, we'll also need a tool handle and we will need a tool binding. Now that we have these materials we can go to the tinker station. I know I could have used the tabs but I didn't. Uh, here we select the pickaxe, you can shift click to put all the materials in and BAM you will see we will have the stone pickaxe. Uh, the end stats will be 116 durability, attack damage of 2, attack speed of 1.2, harvest tier stone, mining speed 4.2, it can have 3 upgrades and 1 ability and 1 additional pierce damage which comes from the modifiers, uh, yeah this one and stone bound. Right cool, so now we have our first tool. Also, in case you are wondering what you need to make the tools, for example, we want to make a sword. You can see it needs a small blade, it needs a tool handle, and one additional tool handle. If you want to make a crossbow, bow limp, bow grip, and a bow string. Right, now that we have our first tool, how about we actually check how to repair them? Uh, for now, it's absolutely simple. We steal some cobblestone here, and we put our tool in here. Put a cobblestone in there and then you can repair it. Uh, problem is, we don't currently have anything to repair. So let's uh, put down some cobblestone, mine it, and there we go. It lost some durability. Now we can put it in here. And bam, full durability once again. Right, cool. That's how you repair the tools. Now for the next step, we need to go deeper into the mod. Step one would, make it, would be making the grout. With the grout, you can make a smeltery. With the smeltery, you can smelt metals and upgrade your tools with metals. Because for now, we only have a stone tool. Right, so let's uh, make us some grout. Tinker. Grout. Grout is made with clay, sand, and gravel. We've got a whole bunch, so let's get two stacks of gravel, two stacks of sand, and one stack of there we go, we've got ourselves a whole bunch of grout. All you need to do is toss this in your favorite smeltery and it will turn into seared bricks. So, 
Now that we have ourselves some grout turned into seared bricks, we can see that we need seared faucets, seared casting basin, seared casting table, seared melter, seared fuel tanks, and a lava bucket to get our starter, smeltery. So that's what we're going to do, and I'll get back to you in a second when it's all set up. All right, and with that, our first meltery is done. If you right-click the melter itself, you can see that you can put in, put in some metals and it will smelt them into the liquid version. For example, if we put in a gold ingot, it's going to take a time to smelt it and you will have, bam, molten gold. What we can do with that is make a casting. For example, if we want to make a casting of a pick head, we first make a stone pick head. We place it in the casting table and we right click the faucet to let the molten gold flow in. Now we have a casting for a pick head, which means we can get some iron bars, in this case two, put it in the smelter, right click the faucet, and bam, we have our iron pick head. What we can do now is go to our tinker station, put back in our pickaxe. Put in our tool upgrade and boom we will now go to an iron pickaxe um, to compare the stats what you can do is not put it in there you go you can see 116 and when i do put it in it gets 257 durability attack damage goes up harvest tier goes up mining speed goes up and it will get another modifier sturdy one made from the strongest iron okay i'm not sure about that but i'll take it fantastic the problem we have now is let me show you. We can mine this for quick. It will still use durability, but we can no longer repair this tool with stone. It now only wants to be repaired with iron. So for that, we pick an iron bar, put the iron bar in here, put the tool in here, and bam, now we need to repair with iron. It's a bit more expensive, but the tool is more good, so that's what you need. What you can also do is make repair kits. For example, to repair the stone tool we had earlier, we use a stone repair kit. But for the iron one, we will need an iron repair kit. What we can do is make a casting for the repair kit, which requires one gold, and then get a bunch of iron to make the kit itself. We put in the gold to make the cast. There we go, we can put the repair kit in here. Wait for the gold to be molten. Use the faucet make the kit and then put in our iron right click the faucet again and it'll pour in the molten iron and bam we have a repair kit the benefit of the repair kits is that you can repair your tool wherever you are so instead of having to bring a whole crafting table you can just have the repair kits in your hand craft your tool and continue mining fantastic now the next step is going to be an even more advanced furnace, meltery I guess, which can make alloys. Alloys are combinations of different metals. Uh, for example, if you want to make bronze, all you need is tin and copper. And boom, you will have bronze. To make the bigger smeltery, you need a smeltery controller. To make a smeltery controller, you place a seared brick into the casting basin. You get yourselves four, four bars of copper. You put in the smelter. Unfortunately, you can only do one each. No, three each time. There we go. It smells quickly though. We only have three ingots in here, waiting for the fourth. There we go. Right click the faucet. It will pour the molten copper on top of the brick. There we go. We have our smeltery controller. Right. Uh, to make an actual smeltery, what you need is a whole lot more bricks to make the base. And you need a fuel tank. Wait, where did my pickaxe go? There we go. You need a fuel tank and the other tools. So I'm going to remove this one and replace it with a new one and be with you in a second. All right, this is the bare basics of an advanced smeltery. We have our smeltery controller. We still have our fuel tank and we have a bunch of seared bricks around it. Do note that the floor also needs to be from seared bricks and then the edge as well. On the corner here, I've made a seared drain with our faucets and our casting table and casting basin. So, 
The interface is basically the same, with the difference being that you can toss different metals in here. For example, if we put a bunch of copper and a bunch of tin in here, there we go, let it smelt for a second, you will see that this has now combined into bronze. Tin, copper, make bronze. If you look up your smeltery controller in the interface and you go to alloying, you can see exactly what kind of alloys you can make. For example, if you want to make an optadium aluminium alloy, all you need is molten, molten aluminium and molten unobtainium and sol lava, which is a degree of 9999 Celsius, and that will turn into unobtainium. Uh, for example, our bronze, that's brass, that's bronze, there you go. Three copper ingots, one tin ingot at 700 degrees will get you molten bronze. That's what we just did. We got it in here now. And now I can also show you what the casting basing is for. We have in here one block. So if we right click the faucet on top of the casting basin, you will see that it will pour in the metal and create a block. I've had to move the drain over because it does need to be on the edge else it does not have the molten metal in it. Right, so now we have a bronze block. Fantastic. What am I going to do with a bronze block, you might ask? Well, to make advanced tooling, you will need an anvil. And for example, one of the anvils is a bronze block anvil. All it needs is three bronze blocks and some seared bricks. And then you get your anvil. So what am I going to do? I'm going to smelt up some more tin and copper. Get some more molten bronze make some more blocks and create the anvil. There we go, we've got two more blocks and one ingot. Right click the faucet, watch it turn into a block, and there we go, we got our three blocks. Go to the crafting bench to get our beautiful anvil. I mean, I don't know if it's beautiful, but beautiful enough for me. Right, let's place this one next to here. I'm not sure if the interface, there you go, interface connects up as well. Right, so in the anvil, you can see that we can make a dagger, a cleaver, a skite sight, a broad axe, sledgehammer, and all kinds of fancier tools. What you can also do in here is upgrade certain tools, and that's what we'll be checking next. If you want to know what kind of upgrades you can make, you should make the smelting book, which requires a book built with searing stone. So to start with, let's put a searing brick in here. Let that smelt up and get ourselves a book. Put the book in the casting table. We make sure that the seared brick, seared stone is on the bottom by clicking it. Whatever you click will appear on the bottom. You can also see the color here change. You right click the faucet and there we go. This should turn into a fancy new book. I don't know how that works, don't ask me, I'm not a writer. All right, so in the book, you can see we have abilities. For example, we have the luck ability. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. Uh, the effects of luck are increases mob drops and block drops. On tools, max of three levels, different recipe for each level. You can see the different levels here. But we will go for the base one. On leggings, max of one level boosts the drops of held tool. Okay, that's interesting. I did not know that. For the first level, what we need is two copper ingots, two blocks of lapis lazuli, and a corn flower. Now, I just happen to know that cornflowers can be found in the twilight forest. So let's have a look there so we can get that going. Uh, these are not what I'm looking for. I'm searching for a blue flower. So if you see one, let me know. Uh, they're in the distance, maybe. Is that a flower or a mushroom? I think that's a flower. Yeah, there we go, cornflower. Right, cool. Let's head back home and get ourselves two lapis lazuli blocks with two copper ingots and go to the anvil. Right, so as was displayed, one here, one here, copper here, copper here, this one in the middle, and we place our tool there, and bam, you can see we will now get luck, flashy. Gives you more nice things for mining or killing mobs. I'm not sure if it also adds something else, but I do know, as you can see on the right, without it, we have one ability, with it, we lose our ability, but yeah, our ability is locked, so that's what we're using. Right, that's cool. 
Now we have luck on our pickaxe, which gives us some extra stuff. Uh, you can also put it on other tools and weapons. And you can even upgrade it further, as was shown in the book. So there you have it. That is the basics of Tinker's Construct. Um, there are a lot more modifiers, abilities, and different kinds of tools and alloys. But I will not be going into all of them, because that would just be like a whole series of itself. Uh, you can read the book that I showed. Uh, it has a lot of information about the different alloys. And then you'll be a Tinker's Construct Master. As always, I uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. If you don't want to miss a video, click that subscribe button, click the like button, so I know that people like this stuff. And uh, see you next time. Bye!